This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and M Now Biscuits. Thirty-four candidates nominated for Nissan and Haku constituencies. Australia and PNG to sign security treaty in June and Western Highlands Provincial Government to pay 2023 tuition fees for students. A good, very good evening. You're watching National MTV News. I'm Grace Papiali. Thank you for joining us. A total of 34 candidates have nominated for the Haku and Nissan constituencies by election in the autonomous region of Bougainville. The two seats of Haku and Nissan constituencies were left vacant after the untimely deaths of respective seating members. After the close of nominations at 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, the order of draw was made to allocate candidate numbers. The people of Haku and Nissan constituencies will go to the polls yet again as candidates prepare to go into intense campaigning in the coming weeks. These two constituencies in the North Bougainville district have seen a good number of interested candidates who will be vying for their respective seats in the House of Representatives. After close of nominations yesterday, a total of 25 candidates have nominated for the Haku seat, while nine have nominated for Nissan seat. Polling commences on Wednesday, the 22nd of February, with counting to begin on Saturday, the 25th, and will continue through to Friday, the 3rd of March, 2023. This constituency by election will be conducted by the Autonomous Bougainville Government Electoral Commission. Meanwhile, by election for North Bougainville seat left vacant by late sitting member William Nakin will be conducted later in March of this year with PNG Electoral Commission expected to conduct the by election. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, on his visit to the Moem barracks in Wiwek yesterday, said he is looking forward to continue strengthening security ties between PNG and Australia. He said he is looking forward to signing the security treaty with Prime Minister James Marape, which will take place in June. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, after visiting the resting place of the late Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare, visited Moem Barracks and placed emphasis on the importance of PNG and Australia relationship. Four Australian uh, PNG uh, ministerial meeting that we have had uh, is an important one in reinforcing the fact that there is no more important relationship that we have uh, with each other than the Australia PNG relationship. Uh, we are not just neighbours, we are family. And here at this barracks, uh, this is further evidence of just how close those ties are. PM Albanese highlighted that PNG and Australia's future is linked, and the success of PNG is the success of Australia. He's looking forward to increasing economic cooperation, increased education and training opportunities for PNG citizens, as well as having stronger security ties into the future. Our security treaty upgrade uh, by the end of April, and then myself and Prime Minister Marape being in a position uh, to sign up uh, by June. I know that uh, one of the things that that will do is to increase the interoperability between our two defence forces. It will be about including greater exchanges as well and helping each other and learning from each other. And this facility here is of course a magnificent one uh, that serves your nation so well. Governor Bird said he looks forward to the security upgrades that were discussed, including economic prosperity and our desires shared with Australia for economic advancement and for prosperity. Thus, secure security is vital. I think in 1975, 
when we attained independence, there were up to 5,000 Australians here. So we would be richer for the experience, and I think uh, the possibility of a, an upgraded security relationship between Australia and Papua New Guinea is particularly appealing because we house the second Pacific Islands Regiment in this province, and we're particularly proud of this, uh, this regiment. They are a credit to our province, and they have served exemplary well in, in many, uh, with distinction in, in the service outside of the province, particularly. I think up in the Highlands, uh, we cannot secure that without security. And particularly our own law and order situation, I think, would force us to, to look to such relationships that enhance our security capability, not just militarily, but of course with policing. So with that, uh, I want to thank you for coming here to see for yourself firsthand how other Papua New Guineans live. And I hope the beauty of it all is not lost on you, Mr. Prime Minister. Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. The Minister for Petroleum and Energy, Karenga Kua, said the activities of small churches operating in the country should be scrutinized. Minister Kua raised this concern after the tabling of the bill to amend the Association in Cooperation Act of 1966 during the recent parliament sitting. People blame our claims of pipeline corridor. Petroleum Minister Karen Gakua explained that associations are incorporated principally to deal with charitable businesses. He said this means that associations cannot give dividends to its members. Minister Kua said the profits are usually recycled to promote the objectives or the end functions of an association. He confirmed that most associations are doing the right thing, but some of the small churches are not doing the right thing. Uh, in essence, it's a not-for-profit entity, not-for-profit. It doesn't, it makes profits but cannot declare dividends. That is the area where that needs some sort of scrutiny, some sort of scrutiny. Most people do the right thing, most associations do the right thing, uh, but as Christians, I noticed that some of the smaller Christian churches uh, do not follow this particular requirement. They live off their profits, effectively paying themselves dividends of tithes and fees and revenue generated from the activities of their smaller churches which are incorporated. Karen Gakua noted that the assets that some of the small churches acquired were being inherited by family members instead of church members when retiring. From the activities and the businesses that they've developed, which is a church association, and the assets that they have built up, um, when they retire, seem to be moving on to their children. So it is inherited not by members of the church, but by members of their family, but acquired in the pretext and context and operation of the association. So um, I would ask, he's doing the right thing, the minister is doing the right thing in trying to create a privileged and exemption, exempted area of operation for such entities like this. But in that small area, there needs to be some level of scrutiny when it comes to the smaller. However, Minister Kua concluded by commending the tabling of the bill to amend the Association Incorporation Act. Estagane, National MTV News. A statement was made on the floor of Parliament by the Western Highlands Governor Wai Rapa regarding the non-payments of the local level government presidents and ward councillors. He says if the LLG follows the same election process as the national general election, then why they are not receiving any form of funds for development purposes at the LLG level. This one. I have a broken car. Governor Rapa, upon presenting his statement, says local-level government is the face of the national government in the community level. He says if they have been following the same electoral process to be elected and be in power to represent the government at the community level, why are they not being paid on a fortnightly basis like the members of parliament? Governor Rapa appealed to the government to look into this matter and find a solution to it. Uh, 
All member of parliament pay him 1,000 kina lokamap member nomination fee. Now member of councillors pay him 200 kina to become a councillor. But you all member of parliament sim fortnight play you every fortnight. But me all councillors there's like 200 kina you may pay him nomination a fortnight play all no sim but all sim form of allowance every month. But that allowance has not been given. So, uh, government to him in a local level government. Uh, local level government no got money to give service to all districts. He says many grievances have been made on the floor of parliament by the members regarding the LLG presidents and LLGs. Lord is like me like appeal through long. Uh, parliament also. Uh, previous government only must pass in some law or some local level governments. The world level only must see some money. We make him some research or some. All servers look him at 10,000 kina low one one world member long. Some black and development funds. But I think he coming up now. This lack like and money only look him too. Not to allowance blow to all look him for too long. Now now to you me will talk low pass him some law where you me can rouse him all. Councillors long, our ward committee, or law provincial government, no all this law. So I'm all same. Statement blow me, me like raising the soul of law now. Some black and look savvy must come up long local level government now behind you, me can all same talk talk law straight in all the work side. You blow open member, you got 10 million. You mean provincial government got budget. What about the local level government? But government but looks away too. He further reiterated that most of the LLG presidents and councillors get support from their local district members and provincial governments year in and year out. He says the government should look into this and provide some form of support to the local level governments throughout the country. Samantha Solomon, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. Western Highlands Provincial Government has taken the initiative to subsidize for tertiary students' tuition fees for the year 2023. This was announced today by Western Highlands Governor Y. Rapa in an interview with MTV in Port Mosby. This initiative taken by the governor to support tertiary students with tuition fee subsidies is the first of its kind for the province. Governor Rapa said human resources is vital for effective development to take place and is delighted to help students studying at tertiary institutions to help build the human resource capacity in his province. So I've seen a lot of parents been struggling. Um, we are spending a lot of money on, uh, you know, schools, high schools, building up so many high schools on that. It's good for the province because population is now tripling and all that. But also, we have to look at uh, universities and uh, colleges too. He said he has seen parents struggling to cover the cost of tertiary students and he will ensure this initiative continues for the next four years. If I can be able to pay a 2,000 or 3,000 kina for a school fee, that's fine. You know, I will try it this year. And uh, I will try to do that for the next five years. I will try that for the next five years and see how I go. I think human resource is the key to, uh, key to the future and for Western Islands province. I need, Western Islands province has been educating a lot of people for Western Islands province education, in education alone, and uh, I want to continue that. Governor Rapa also took the initiative to acknowledge those who are already joining the workforce and encourage them to give their best to contribute to nation building going forward. So if you are one of the students uh, who've been struggling all your life to become you know, whoever you are in the field, you are now, uh, uh, you know, 
Sharon Engnui, National MTV News. Paradise Foods Limited has relaunched the Hamamas Ice Cream, Hamamas Classic and Hamamas Double Chocolate under the brand name Gala in front of Stop and Shop Waigani in Port Mosby this morning. As part of the relaunching program, a motorcade went around Port Mosby. It started at Waigani Central Stop and Shop to Gordon's to Four Mile and went all the way to Hohola and back to Waigani Central. All the vehicles were decorated with posters and flyers to show the general public that the new Hamamas ice cream double chocolate is now available in the shops for purchase and for customers to enjoy with their loved ones. Junior brand manager for ice cream, beverages and culinary Gloria Sabado explained what this ice cream is made of. Ice creams. So the Hamamas Classic features a blend of creamy toffee and vanilla ice cream, while our Hamamas Double Chocolate is a feast of chocolate flavors. Both Hamamas flavors are dipped in the chocolate, coated with crunchy biscuit crumbs to give the most complete premium and flavor packed of ice cream offering yet. She says Paradise Foods is bringing out new products for the people to enjoy throughout the country. Paradise Foods Limited under the brand name Gala are relaunching the Hamamas um, ice cream um, product. So these are the Hamamas Classic and the Hamamas Double Chocolate. Proud to be living by our motto, feeding the nation, and proud to be a home brand PNG and locally made um, company. Samantha Solomon, National MTV News. The Department of Petroleum and Energy is being urged to inspect projects delivered by proponents who have obtained monies by claiming to represent the people of Lower Foa in Kutubu, Southern Highlands Province. This call was made from the community representative and head teacher of Remote Countable Primary School, Dux Anagu. Dux Anago raised this concern, claiming that in 2002, when the Ira Kohari people held a strike, the then Somare government made a commitment to them following assessments that they were genuine landowners. However, it is claimed that the government's commitment did not eventuate, as persons who took up representative roles decided to pursue their own interests instead. So only can see that na change of the scenario or projects all being applied locally. And through through and work or every type of place, so all making finish, so all can come. Now people are people are thinking now. People are like what's them? People are like him. Inspection team must. With project proposals submitted and monies accessed by some individuals for the remote Kantebo Kafa airstrip, community school, water supply, and other projects. To date, there has been no signs of improvements or developments. Although being next to the resource impact area, schools have no proper desks for its students, health services are very poor to none, and clean water supply still a big problem there. It is claimed that a Port Mosby-based landowner representative successfully accessed monies from the department for projects there last November. However, to date, nothing has been done. A worried Mr. Anagu is calling on the Petroleum Minister Keranga Kua to send teams to assess these unfinished projects on ground. The Department of Petroleum and Energy has been urged to serve resource owners fairly and transparently with a further call to Prime Minister James Marape to take note of such claimed corrupt practices that continue to affect innocent people back in the resource-rich villages of Kutubu. Lindy Suharupa, National MTV News. A selected number of students from various universities and colleges who are members of the Ipili Student Society from the new Pogara Payala district in Anga province carried out a three weeks long awareness program covering all the LLGs in the new Pogara Payala electorate. The LLGs include Maip Muli LLG, Pogara Urban, Pogara Rural and Payala Hewa LLG. The, the awareness was carried out to educate the people on law and order issues, education, SME, and health. 
This youths have taken a united stance in conducting awareness to all the communities. The main issues that were identified in the Pogera and Paella districts is nothing new to talk about, but has been ignored for almost two years since the closure of the Pogera gold mine and businesses in the Pogera town. These issues are law and order, closure of education and health services, and the rest. During the appeal, Pogara Town Councillor Peter Malipu has taken the initiative to support this important cause. Malipu said that with a total population of over 70,000 people residing in the valley, the disruptions of schools, hospital closure and rising law and order problems have affected them. He alluded that the solution is seeing the Pogara mine open and the restoration of basic government services. Now we have long uh, national government, provincial government, now leaders, the SME leaders, Look, come together. I think we blow only man one them, and we blow fighting all the corruptions. Lone out of the valley. Spoke on behalf of the youths was Levi Robin, a person with vision impairment whose concern was for the urgent government intervention. Why is the government turning blind eye upon me as a Pogarin? Me snap lo here, na me talk talk, me blind man. Na me no got narap lo hap lo go. This is my district and this is my place, but Mr. Plo here. Me like him, government. He must revive him, district, let me come back. I must restore him all, get the services, let me come back. The U.S. Congress has recommended, has commemorated the Human Rights Trafficking Awareness Day on the 11th of January this year. This was to help the U.S. government to be steadfast in its commitment to prevent human trafficking around the world and to protect survivors of all forms of human trafficking. Domestically, human traffickers exploit women and children in sex trafficking and in and enforced labor in domestic services and many others. According to international non-government research, approximately 30% of Papua New Guinean children are victims of sex trafficking. These children are paid to are said to be younger than the age of 18. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. The Universal Church in Port Mosby today held a special program called Not Normal, which aims to teach the young people to know that it is not normal for them to live a life of criminal activities, addictions, or other illicit activities. More than 300 youths and adults stand up to take part in this event. About 226 youths and 88 adults all gathered at the Universal Church Hall for this special event. Today's program saw youths participating in different groups with songs, dances and music as part of their program. The Universal Church of PNG was established in 2018 aimed at serving people in all aspects of life. Universal Church Pastor Jonathan Pine said most of the young people in this country are getting involved in bad activities daily and consider them as normal. Therefore, they organized this event to show them that it is not normal. The pastor said as a church, their main goal behind this program is to help those who are involved in unethical behaviors to change their lives and have a good life. So the main goal of this event, which is called It's Not Normal, is to let young people know that it's not normal for them to live in a life of criminal activity, in a life of addictions, in a life of pain and suffering. More and more we hear reports of people going through hold-ups and people being robbed around the streets and many times these have been done by youths. Youths who should uh, be living a normal life but they are doing things that they consider as normal but it's not normal. One of the youth, Kota Takib, shared his experience saying that his life changed when he joined the church. 
before I joined the Universal Church, uh, the WYG group, uh, I used to be in, I involved in many things like the outsiders used to, like now they, they are doing. Like I, used, I involved in bad relationship, bad companies, uh, I used to smoke, chew, like smoking and chewing it's like, it's, for me it's, it's normal, normal thing I used to do, like my daily life. And then one day, like I, I was invited to YG, and then I learned how to overcome this thing. Pastor Pine confirmed that they had a lot of similar programs in previous years, and they will continue to have these programs this year to make a positive change in the lives of youths. The pastor said others will have similar programs in their churches located in Ley and Arawa tomorrow. Estagane, National MTV News. The Tokarara Ward 8 Community Watch Team in Port Mosby have taken the initiative to provide security for their community both inside and outside of their area. This group is comprised of members of a new association called Kora Ayoragaha Association. MTV visited a team today who are stationed at Tokarara Ward 8 in Port Mosby. This watch team have been providing security for the local residents in their ward since the festive season and have continued their great initiative despite of not getting help or recognition from designated authorities like the National Capital District Commission or the Electorate Authority. Comprising of around 20 men and youths, they control traffic and security for the people walking in and out of the area on a daily basis, although they have decided to quit their initiative due to no support after a meeting held with the ward members, the people have pleaded for them to continue the work they do. Team leader Camilo Pao elaborates. The start law, festive season law. Christmas, New Year come. Lo, especially the local team, all, uh, all parents, blumpla, lo, here, especially mothers and children, the community. Blumpla. Me plus show my own initiative. Blumpla, lo, here. Joe Pino, the team's assistant, called for support so they can continue the work they do daily. We are trying to call on our current member if he can uh, see us and help us too, and also to our governor if they can support us on. Uh, helping us to maintain this program until the end of the year. Longtime resident David Olewale says the community watch team have done a great work by helping the local residents and further recommended that they are providing support to continue keeping their community safe. All criminal activities have come here here. Also pull him back now. Steal him car now. All this line. Passing have come up but Time all this line all come stop walk, start walk now. And me look looking all same and fish stop. Now me blah am a muscle this law walk long all. Moving to overseas news now, flood affected residents in the Kimberley region in Australia are becoming more frustrated as rescue and recovery efforts slow down in Western Australia's north. Many have been allowed to return to their remote communities near Fitzroy, crossing in recent days, but for others, there's still no clear timeline on when they'll be able to return on. With waters receding, some roads near Broome are reopening. But Derby and Fitzroy crossing remain cut off. But we need help as soon as possible. We can't be waiting, waiting, waiting. And here is a complete year flat one. <laughs> All right, now we don't know how deep that is. Locals and Fitzroy evacuees were shown this footage of the roads at a community meeting in Derby. Among them, former long-term Shire president Elsa Archer. Never. In all my years here, I have never seen anything like this. About 60 evacuees have returned to remote communities, but for others, the wait could be much longer. I am here to listen and hear your concerns, um, and obviously there will be frustrations as well. 
As frustrations grow, authorities have introduced temporary liquor restrictions in Derby and Broome. Emergency services say they'll get evacuees back into their homes as soon as they know the basics are intact. After months of intense fighting, Russia claims to have captured the eastern Ukrainian town of Solida. It's the first military victory from Moscow since July after six months of setbacks. But Ukraine denies Russia has full control of the city, saying its forces continue to resist. A salt mining town under Russian assault. Solidar has become a story of carnage and contradiction. After months of bloody fighting, an attempt by Russia to give a clear message. For the first time, a claim to be in complete control. And that this town is the start of something bigger. The capture of Solidar became possible due to the constant destruction of the enemy, says Russia's defense ministry. By ground attack, aircraft, missiles, and artillery. But Ukraine is saying fighting continues in Solidar. Our troops are holding defense against the enemy. Ukraine has resisted Russia's attack here for months. The price is getting heavier. We will never give up. This is our Solidar, our city, and we will not give it to anyone. Ukraine is ours. As soon as we see the Russian soldiers, we will hit them. The Kremlin hasn't had anything to cheer about for the last six months since it last captured a major location. Solidar would change that, but it's also why Kiev is hinting at a possible retreat. It's because the last time a city fell, Russia made minimal gains and Ukraine retook swathes of territory elsewhere. It's also why Solidar is unlikely to alter the course of this war. Donald Trump's real estate organization has been handed the maximum fine possible in a tax fraud case in New York. It follows the jailing early this week of a former senior executive of the company. 2.3 million Australian that the Trump organization, that's the Tr Donald Trump's real estate organization, has been ordered to pay. As you say, that's the maximum that they could have been ordered to pay in this case. That won't make much of a dent financially, but it could mean that the company has difficulty in the future in securing loans, for example. Now, this is after a jury um, found that the organization was guilty of a, a raft of tax fraud crimes, 17 in total including uh, paying senior executives off the books perks. So essentially paying them in part um, through private school fees for their kids, through luxury cars, through apartments, and, and that those payments were never uh, subject to tax. Uh, now, this uh, conviction was possible after the former uh, chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, became the star witness for the prosecution. Uh, he testified against the company. He uh, is facing or he's now been jailed uh, for five months. Uh, that sentence handed down earlier this week. Now, Donald Trump himself or his immediate family members were not part of this trial, but it is, of course, uh, their organization. So uh, an unpleasant uh, decision for Donald Trump. He's tried to um, stave off this legal action as he tends um, to do with the, the many cases he's facing. Um, but it's still negative as to how this will hurt him, this one decision will hurt him. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sports. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. The National Men's Football Tournament resumed today with the men's quarter-final playoffs at the Sir John Guy's football field in Port Mosby. Top four teams went ankle-to-ankle, -ankle, compete for a place in the finals. Top four teams in the men's national football tournament competed today in the quarter-final rounds. 
The teams representing all four regions took to the field their best players. As the competition manager explains, the first two teams to take the field first displayed an interesting match showcasing their skills while having to defend and guard their goal. Both teams defended well as the ball was passed around from the midfielders to the forwards, but with strong defense at hand, scoring a goal was a challenge. The two teams came to draw and were given extra time. The winner of these two matches will play off against uh, the winner of the Highlands Conference game, which is up at the NSI Goroka between Ape Aporo FC, who hosts uh, Lay Natives FC. And then we have down in the Lay Academy, we have the Lay City FC hosting uh, Kuri FC from Mount Hagen. But the Komara side proved too strong, claiming the win with 3 2 nil win. Competition manager Amjad Takwi said the game was postponed from last year due to elections and other in house issues. Initially, we were scheduled to have the NSL uh, quarterfinals on the 10th of December, uh, but due to the flight disruptions with New Guinea, we were unable to fly in uh, Panguna Metal FC as well as Kimba Eagles, and we had some. Uh, unrest up in the highlands which also affected the highlands and lay teams respectively. So we opted to defer the uh, finals fixture to the 14th which is today. The four teams that competed today in the quarter final for the Southern Conference will see the winners proceed into the semi-finals and will go into challenging the other three conferences. The competition will see its semi-final playoff on Wednesday next week, where teams from each of the conference will compete here in Port Mosby to earn a spot in the grand final round, which is said to take place on next Saturday. Lisa Puni, Chukai Sports. The, Ho the Hohola off-season played all of its round 10 matches today at the Hohola EP Park. Tournament coordinator Omega Nari says the competition has two more regular rounds remaining before heading into the finals. The Hohola of season tournament witnessed 19 games competed in its round 10 of competition today at the Hohola EP Park. The tournament is set to complete its regular rounds of competition in two weeks' time. For this weekend's main highlight, tomorrow we'll witness the clash of the wards, which will see wards 7 and 8 go head-to-head -head in Game 2 of the State of Origin. <laughs> Tournament President Kambi Ingiman told MTV's Trukai Sports that the winning team from Game 2 of the State of Origin clash will battle against the Port Mosby Vipers development squad next weekend at the main events venue of the Hohola off-season competition. Lisa Puni, Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. You're watching Chukai Sports moving to overseas sports now. The first coaches have moved three points clear of the Sydney Sixes at the top of the Big Bash League cricket ladder. Beating the Sydney Thunder by nine wickets at Sydney Showground. David Warner's return to the Big Bash couldn't save the Thunder. He managed 19 off 20 balls in his first BBL game in nine years as the Thunder were restricted to 111 all out in 19 overs. Warner's former test opening partner Cameron Bancroft took a superb diving catch to help dismiss Nathan McAndrew on 21 and hand Andrew Ty his third wicket. Bancroft then hit an unbeaten 55 off 40 balls as the Scorchers won their third match in a row. Novak Djokovic has received a warm welcome on his return to the Australian Open in Melbourne. 
The nine-time champion met home favourite Nick Kyrgios in a charity match for his first appearance in the city since he was deported over his unvaccinated status against COVID-19. After winning the first Adelaide International last week, the former world number one admitted he felt a bit emotional returning to Melbourne. Djokovic and Kyrgios renewed their rivalry following the 2022 Wimbledon final where the Serb came from a set down to beat Kyrgios in four and claim his 21st Grand Slam title. The pair were joined on court by wheelchair players David Wagner and Heath Davidson and two junior players with Team Kyrgios winning the deciding tiebreak. He's 2-1 against me, so <laughs> as far as I'm concerned he can win anything. Uh, Nick, you said late last year you'd retire if you won one. True. 100%. Um, I, it's a lot of training, it's a lot of work, and I just want to be able to eat whatever I want, drink what I want to drink, and then just relax. It's a hard, it's a hard lifestyle. You know, the dedication that these guys show day in, day out. Um, you know, I did a bit, a bit of that last year, had a great year last year to show the world that I'm still one of the best. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to try and do it this year, and hopefully I can, I can do it, but it'll be hard. The Central Coast Mariners have moved to second on A-League men's ladder with a 2-1 victory over MacArthur FC. Arthur FC at Campbelltown Stadium. Brazilian forward Marco Tullio opened the scoring for the Mariners in the fourth minute. Socceroos striker Jason Cummins struck soon after to hand the visitors a 2-0 lead at half-time. Matthew Miller pulled one back for MacArthur in the second half. The Bulls continued to threaten, but the Mariners held on for a third straight win. The Central Coast closing the gap on first place to Melbourne City to three points. It was like a Friday night boxing match towards the end then, you know, obviously. I was in disbelief watching that towards the end. It was just every, anything went. You know, I would have loved to play out there tonight. Uh, no fouls, just play on. And, and but massive credit to the boys. These boys, we got stuck on the bus three and a half hours today. And that ends Trukai Sports. The Money Plus weather report is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. Now we take a look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours. In the southern region, Port Mosby City, cloudy periods with patchy rain. Daru, cloudy periods with brief showers. Kerema, few showers with possible thunderstorms. Alatau, cloudy with few showers and thunderstorms. Popondeta, few showers and thunderstorms. In Momase region, Lay City, cloudy with few showers. Medeng, partly cloudy. Wiwek, mostly fine. Vanimo, partly cloudy. In the New Guinea Islands region, Lorengao, cloudy periods with brief showers. Kaviang, partly cloudy. Kokoporabal, cloudy periods. Kimbe, cloudy with some showers and possible thunderstorms. Buka, cloudy periods with brief showers. In the Highlands region, Mount Hagen City, cloudy with rain periods, then morning fog. Gorka and Kundiawa, cloudy with rain periods, then morning fog. Mendi and Wabeg, cloudy with some showers, then morning fog. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you, always. And that wraps up the new sports and weather for Saturday, the 14th of January, 2023. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Bye for now. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.